I, I think that most companies have made more or less some kind of, of conscious decision. I think the, our clients are, are, are smart people. Gregor, I talked with Joachim a few days ago about bimodal IT and is very pro of that concept, but you are not. Why? Well, the uh, bimodal IT or pace layered IT concept is um, around the idea that you have at the bottom the system of records, like your ERP system, your bank accounts, or whatever it is that, that is like the core in your business. And then you have one or more layers on top, which you call the system of engagement or system of innovation. And the idea is that you run the system of innovation at high speed while you run the system of records at the lower speed. That's the bimodal or, or pace layered IT. And uh, why is this wrong? Well, this real business innovation and improvement is about uh, who is the customer, getting new customers, uh, what is the product, new products, uh, new uh, payment models, and it's about new ways to deliver your product. And where are all these things located? They are in the system of records. In the ERP system, traditionally? Yes, in an ERP system, or if it's a bank. Uh, so, for instance, many banks uh, have their credit card transactions and account transactions in, um, in the mainframe system. So if they're going to do any real product innovation, new ways of payment and so on, it will have to be in the system of record, because that is where the customers live, that, uh, that is where the transactions live, that is where the accounts live. So on top, what you can do is very limited un unless you decide to re-implement the same functionality from the system of records again in, in, in the top layer. So I have worked with many customers who have their whole innovation in the system of records because that is where the bulk of your business is. And if you can innovate successfully there, then you can have a, a big impact on your revenues and on, on your margins. Whereas innovating on, on top, it has a very limited effect. Can you see any benefits with bimodal IT where it's good to implement it? Of course, I'm aware that there are many companies that have more IT systems than, than they can handle. So they, they, um, they can't be fast everywhere. But perhaps then the solution is not to keep some systems running very slowly and others running fast. Perhaps the solution is to take the systems that you can't really manage on your own and uh, uh, buy a software as a service solution instead. But I think that a lot of companies, they have bimodal IT, but they are not aware of it. Yes, of course. Uh, and, but I, I think that most companies have made more or less some kind of, of conscious decision. I think that our clients are, are, are smart people. And uh, I think that they do know that they are prioritizing different systems differently. Mm -hmm. But I think that you have to remember that uh, it's a different word now than it used to be. It used to be that you had five years before everything changed. And now it's not five years anymore, it's three months. And even, even in traditional old mainframe companies doing really record things, uh, regulations are changing so fast and uh, lots of things are changing. So they have to be fast even in their old systems. Uh, okay. Companies are do, moving now to doing uh, DevOps on the mainframe as well. What about uh, when you have a slow IT department and the business side go for cloud services and buy your own device? Is mm. that also a bimodal IT? Yeah, that, that is uh, truly a bimodal IT where the um, clients uh, on the business side see that, well, our IT solutions are so slow. We want to have evergreen, fast evolving solutions uh, from the internet, software as a service. So, um, yes, but uh, that was never the intention, right, of, uh, of bimodal IT, in a way. In our, your opinion, the concept is not working, but in reality, we have it. 
Yes. So then the question is, the things that you do on your own, you can't afford to do them slowly. And the things that you can't afford to do fast, maybe you shouldn't be doing them. So focus on a few things, do those fast, and give the other things to someone else who can do those fast. So is the bimodal uh, thinking a result of the thought to have large systems that take care of everything? So you're saying that with microservices it would be different? If you have a lot of different systems that could be changed in, uh, faster, then uh, the whole IT would be faster compared I to large ERP systems that takes years to change. I don't understand why it would take years to change these systems because we're seeing that even in old mainframe system, systems that have been growing since the 70s and 60s, people are now starting to apply DevOps. The challenge has been when you have off-the-shelf systems that has been tailored a lot, so you can't upgrade and it's very hard to do changes and integrate. I, I am aware that uh, people have sometimes built themselves into a corner by applying insufficient quality to, to their work and uh, taking shortcuts and so on and maybe selecting systems that, are, that were not speed friendly. But it's a different word now. Instead of accepting the slowness, it is time to do something about it and embracing speed. What do you think about bimodal IT from a leadership perspective when you need different ambition levels? That, it, it, this is very interesting. Because uh, one thing that you're doing with bimodal IT is that you're dividing your staff into the, the fast people and the slow people. And who wants to be in the slow people? Who would be motivated by that? Uh, neither of us, I think. But there is a lot of people that probably are rather comfortable with that. I think that everyone wants to contribute meaningfully at work. Mm. And uh, I think that the, um, the idea of being in the team that takes care of the things that no one wants to do is maybe not inducive to that thought. But of course, people are different and some people will like it better. So people that are more adept and want to do changes, they are the people that could work in a such organization on the faster track. So are you a more speed or change friendly person because you work in a faster way? But So some things change, like what the product is doing, but other things don't change so much. The, the, uh, the way of working, uh, the, you know, in, in Scrum people work on two week sprints. It's always a two week sprint. It's not an 11 day sprint sometimes and a nine day sprint mm -hmm. sometimes. So some things change, but many things remain constant.